Good evening. Right now, Metro police are desperately searching for the person or people responsible for killing a man and a woman. Breaking news now. A triple shooting leaves two dead. Never expect for somebody to tell you your loved one was, was murdered. This Labor Day will mark 42 years that have haunted the St. Cloud family. 30 years. 30 years this family has waited for answers. A couple months go by, three, four, five, six, and you, you really start to struggle with the idea that the case might not get solved and uh, that somebody might get away with murder. It's very unfortunate that we have any cold cases at all, and certainly unfortunate that we have as many as we do. And that's why the Ryan's work and the work of Project Cold Case is so important. Hey, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us today on uh, Facebook Live. I'm here with uh, Anton Sigurdsson. Yep. All right. This is uh, Anton's back in in the States, I should say, you're an Icelandic filmmaker. Mm -hmm. You've done a number of feature films, TV shows, mm -hmm. and while you're here today, we're going to talk about uh, a, a docu-series that you did. Uh, it's just kind of still working on, mm -hmm. I guess, finalizing. Uh, but it was a, an unsolved murder that happened here in Jacksonville yeah. that ended up being solved. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, and it had a connection back to Iceland. Mm -hmm. So um, so you came down, shot this series, and it's going to be airing in, in Iceland in the next couple of weeks, right? It airs on Sunday the 19th of May, first okay. episode. Then we have another one the week after. The week after. 26th of May. And then on June 2nd, the season finale. The, the, all right. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit to lay the foundation for those joining us of... Uh, the victim in this case, which yep. is kind of how it we ties me yeah, 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 and yeah, you yeah. together. Uh, Sherry Prather mm -hmm. is uh, a, a local. She lives here in Jacksonville. She goes to this bar called Boots and Bottles regularly. Yep. She goes up there one night to meet up with some friends um, and doesn't come home. Yeah, basically, like you said, she went to this latest night at Boots and Bottles. Um, she had been arguing with her boyfriend and she goes to the bar her mother didn't really want her to go and but she like she was gonna walk if she, mom didn't take yeah, yeah yeah well it was uh, you know a lot of things leading up between her going and yeah. uh it was late in the evening already yeah and, and her friends were already go. there yeah so yeah. when she shows up you know uh, it's not that she didn't stay there for a that long because it just was close. It was already close. Yeah, late uh, something like that. Yeah. Um, she, her mom knows something's wrong because Sherry. Um, it wasn't uncommon for her to you know stay somewhere else for a few days. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But she was always in constant contact with her mom. Yeah, I mean, she just was a grown-up woman and, yeah, and yeah, everything like a... that. So if a grown-up woman goes missing, you know, we don't know. You don't call the police, but. Uh, Norma, unless her mother, she did because she was like, "Hey, I know my daughter. She's yeah. gonna be. She we're in constant communications." And Norma and was, was right. And she was right. She and also, uh, uh, like she said, everything leading up to her before she was going and everything like that. It was like something felt off. Off, yeah. And then when she was not coming home, uh, they had a friend of hers that she went up and met at the bar. Who was gonna like. Go with her home yeah and had told norma you know yeah i'll take they, her home yeah, yeah. and uh she uh called her like do you know about her she was like no she went something out somewhere yeah, else she... and i think Rhonda actually said she went with this guy on, a, on this yeah, motorcycle somebody, yeah. and then they were like okay that's the first thing they heard about that and then yeah obviously yeah, so she she uh, she is, ends up being missing for about a month. Yeah, what happens is she they go to the bar mm -hmm. trying to check out surveillance, and the bar doesn't have that. Yeah, and uh, but there's a Boost Mobile. Yeah, mobile phone store next yeah. door has a which has like this cropped <laughs> image in the uh, in the bottom 
right corner of Sherry wandering around and sitting on that motorcycle. And you can see, if you know the guy on it, you will find out who that is. But yeah. Right. It, it, it's, it's a grainy Really grainy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not, not top quality uh, no, no. surveillance camera. Yeah. And uh, so they know that she, this is the last one seen with her, the last pictures of her, last yeah. anybody saw her. And then just days pass. And uh, they bring in a thing. They bring him in. Yeah, days pass. They bring him in. Yeah. No, no, no. no. What, what happens? They Days pass. Uh, Mandy, Sherry's daughter, Sherry's daughter right. gets a text message. Like, I know where your mother's body is. Yeah. And uh, it's at, at Brad Road, right. which is this forest... And uh, they go there, the police goes there with cadaver dogs and, and I think a helicopter and, and everything. Yeah, they bring out the whole search crew. Yeah, and they find her like 24 hours later. And uh, it was, yeah. And I mean, it was 24 hours after the call came in, but she had been in, missing, missing for, th- for, for 31 days. 31 30 days, day. yeah. So she, she's pretty badly decomposed. I mean, it was skeletons, a skeleton. Yeah, and, and we're... She was found as this road where people throw throw carcasses of yeah, animals that yeah, they've for, yeah, hunted an, or whatever. Yeah, and animals had. Yeah, and so, then, see, so it, it was. It's almost like a yeah. These uh, vultures and animals, scavenger animals, <clears throat> hang out in that area because they they know that somebody's going to throw a dead deer or something in the woods. Yeah. Except this time it wasn't a deer, so her. <clears throat> Remains were scattered. Yep. Um, and she had been, you know, deceased for about a month. They, or for over a month. Um, they had, I, the police had identified whose motorcycle that was pretty early on, I think, right? Like, they they knew it was him. They knew it was Johnny Wayne Johnson's yeah. motorcycle yeah. that she got on the back of. Mm-hmm. I don't know when they interviewed. You, you have... Um, the footage of the of the interview was that later on that was later on later that's on. that's okay. when he get arrested okay but okay. they had interviewed him before and let him go and he just said that i dropped her off somewhere he dropped her off on trout river trout river was his story and uh she got into a car with some people with some ups yeah and he he was kind of weirded out by the people so he left her that was his story yeah four years later um they actually arrest him yeah they they take him in because they think they have enough evidence. Yeah. Finally, they have enough evidence to make an arrest, and uh, they bring him in and arrest him. Yeah, and you've obviously you shot this uh, mm-hmm. this docu series. You've uh, been able to meet the family. One of the things that every single person you talk to uh, mentions about this family is they were constantly out in the public eye. Uh, you know raising awareness for Sherry's case, uh, demanding justice, uh, yeah. sometimes maybe even overstepping where the the uh, investigators wanted them, you know, to be. Um, but so it took four years um, for them to, to, to have enough evidence to make mm-hmm. the arrest. They make the arrest. It takes another two years or another few years before he pleads guilty. Yeah. So, um, so what happens is, like, like you said, the uh, family is constantly, they keep fighting and fighting and fighting, like, you know, which, which is great. And, yeah. Uh, uh, we interviewed Dan Skinner and mm-hmm. also... State Attorney's his, Office. Yeah, State, yeah State and then Jay Farhead. Right, uh, the, 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 the uh, sergeant of the homicide team that Exactly, at this it. time. And they both said, Jay said, this case had more tips than any other case that we like have had yeah it a lot of people called in a lot of things was bullshit but a lot of things were leading up to johnny wayne johnson yeah and dan said from day one there was only one suspect yeah we knew it was him but we need to figure out how can we prove it and they had all and they did a lot of things um and uh what they all both said and everybody has said that without norma ellis John Wayne Johnson would not be, not be behind bars. Yeah. She's an amazing woman, you know. 
Very strong woman, very yeah. adamant when she sets her mind to something. Yeah, and what really this is like a powerhouse of a woman. But what I found most like one of the most interesting parts about her is she's much smarter than people think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she she's gone through. She, she told us some of the stuff that she's gone through. Yeah. Some of the loss. I mean, and yeah. within a year or two, like prior a- to she, yeah, yeah, this eighteen month span, she lost her husband, her mom, her sister, her daughter. Yeah, and she was close to every, and, and, and like super close to every single one yeah. of them. And I mean, she's gone through more trauma and loss than, yeah, and than she, anyone like, should have to go through. She watched her husband die. Yeah, he, you know, he was sick. He was with her. Yeah, no, she, he and uh, and her sister died in her place. Right, it was, right. It was, it was, like it was, went to bed. Like I, I don't yeah, feel well. Yeah, yeah, and didn't and wake d- up. And didn't wake up. Her mom hit her head on a on, on the, the tub or yeah, something yeah. on the bathtub. Yeah, and died suddenly. Yeah, and traumatic. I mean. And then her daughter is murdered, abducted and murdered. You know, basically like yeah. is missing for a month yeah. and murdered. Uh, she had, I think it's pretty safe to say she was at a breaking point. Uh, she had gone through so much. Mm-hmm. There was no way she was going to let Sherry's death just, you know, go away. No. She was going to get justice. Uh, <clears throat> she was going to make sure that nobody forgot about, mm-hmm. about Sherry. Um, and, and Johnny Wayne Johnson pleads guilty to second degree murder in 2018. Yeah. He's sentenced to 20 and a half years yep. in prison. <clears throat> and that's that's uh, something that we it's fascinating to talk about because he was not going to plead and everybody right. knew he was not going to plead and they had no evidence in yeah, a way. Yeah, it was it was a very uh, circumstantial case. Yeah, it was really hard for them to <coughs> And if they had evidence you know, it was from somebody that he was married at at the time. They, could right, use they it. couldn't use in court. So, like, a jury would never hear how they found the, the, the body. The best evidence they had was not admissible in court. No. And so, you know, and there were people that had died along the way in this you yeah, know, there was six this... year journey to trial. People had died that they now they couldn't bring evidence in. Yeah, the chain had broken because of a death. Because of death. And uh, they couldn't because it was a hearsay from another to another. And uh, they couldn't use that to court. So and one of the other interesting things that we didn't even mention was when they found Sherry's remains, they didn't know how she had died. No. Um, so they had to hire an expert, yep. uh, anthropologist, mm-hmm. to, uh, to basically put together all of of Sherry's bones and remains and she found uh, an impact in her back that was consistent with a bullet. Yeah. And, you know, before you can ever consider charging somebody with murder, you got to be able to prove that the murder actually happened, you know, and we've seen this in the, in the past with uh, uh, unidentified remains cases or cases, you know, where the remains have been out for a long period of time and you can't tell if they were shot or strangled, you know, short of, uh, you know, bullet damage to the skull or, or a bone, uh, if 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 you can't identify how they were killed, a medical examiner can't rule it a homicide. Yeah, and then yeah, you don't like, have a case. Yeah, like they said, you know, if Heather hadn't found that out, you know, they were looking at like she could have just. Any, stung by any, a bee and died. They, right, they, you right. Know, the, you can say Johnny's attorney could have used basically everything. anything. Yeah, yeah like uh, she got off the back of the motorcycle, mm-hmm. she fell and hit her head in the woods. Yeah, you know what I mean. It, it yeah. was not murder. Yeah. It was. Uh, and they never, uh, they never found a gun. No. And uh, Johnny didn't have a gun. Yeah. And uh, uh, they never found a murder weapon or anything like that. So it was. It was. The police did a really good job. You know, people will say they did. A, they got the guy. He pled, pled right. and everything like that. But there were a lot of things around this case that were bizarre. Yeah, but it's like there's only two people that know what happened that night. Yeah, Sherry's gone. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and then John. Johnny. So there's what people think happened. Mm-hmm. You kind of piece together from other people's stories and what makes sense. And then for the the state attorney's office, there's what they can prove happened, which is often different than either of those other two things. You know, yeah, what you, you think happened and what actually happened. And you saying, you know, only two people know what happened, you know, then we sit here and like, maybe there are more. Maybe somebody else. 
But they so, weren't coming forward with information. Nope. So that if there's anybody out there that knew exactly what happened, they were not given that information to not to the police. To the police. But a lot of people are talking. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk about that. But before we get there, uh, this case comes across your desk or mm -hmm. is brought to your attention um, because. Johnny has an Icelandic connection. Yeah, so it was all in the news in Iceland. And you have those uh, articles. Let's, let's put up some of those mm -hmm. uh, images. So in Iceland, uh, you know, here's Johnny Wayne Johnson in, in the headlines, and you can just kind of scroll through them. That, I did one translated, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah, one exactly. to show that it was actually, this was Icelandic news. Mm -hmm. So it was a, a, a well, it was a rather large story in Iceland because this is not something that happens in Iceland. No, it, it was a story that ran in Iceland for, uh, yeah, it's a story that ran in Iceland for some weeks, but it was this strange case. People were talking about the stories, but then they just sort of forgot, forgot it about and it. didn't think about it because... Out of sight, out of mind. Out of sight, out of mind. He's, you know, at Jacksonville, living yeah. near Jacks, and... Uh, and then, and that's like what, as a filmmaker, you love something, you know, if you're just looking at a filmmaker's point of view, yeah. it's the stories that you want. Yeah. yeah. And then, so we said. It hasn't that, been beat to death in the media. But nobody it, knows anything. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, I'm not just talking about Icelandic people. I'm just talking about people. People in general. Yeah. I, I mean, even people here. I mean, now I, you've come here. Yeah. There are people that are connected to this case that had lots of information to talk mm -hmm. to you about. Yeah. And then there's this whole other rest of the city mm -hmm. that, you yeah. know, didn't really, you know, uh, know this had happened. Didn't really, you know, it, it's, we're in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, there's over a hundred murders here a year. Mm -hmm. um, if there, if 60% of those get solved, 40% don't get solved. It becomes every third day, there's another murder in Jacksonville. The, while the media is trying to keep up with the latest murder, they're not always talking about the ones that's now two weeks old, two months old, you know, a year old. In fact, if Sherry hadn't been missing for 30 days uh, and then found, that kind of rekindled the interest here locally with the media. And the, also the, uh, the surveillance footage right, was right. like television worthy yeah, seeing her yeah, there. Yeah. But also, that's what Jay Farrett said. He said, listen, we get cases every day. We got to work on them also. So I think Norma Ellis got a little frustrated about that. Yeah. She, she just wants to know, it's her daughter, only daughter, and she has to find out what happened. Right. And maybe police isn't responding as well or quickly as she wants them to do because, you know, they got to work other cases and they're like, don't have the budget to like... Yeah, I mean, they have... A, they have at the time five homicide teams yeah. you know that work that rotate and yeah. uh so you know you've got five teams each team has four and a, and a sergeant but they're they're rotating those hundred cases yeah. you know between all of them yeah. and uh and it, it's not ideal no you no know, because each victim is not getting the specific attention that the family wants to I, see I, exactly it, them get um <clears throat> but you know, it's also not feasible for the sheriff's office to to hire enough that one detective handles one case, yeah. you know, and you have 100 detectives. Mm -hmm. um, but but so as a filmmaker, is that, that, that that's how you this catches your eye and you do a little bit more research and you're like, yeah, you know, as a filmmaker, you know, I'm only working on this case. I'm not working right. on the case. Somebody was murdered last night. That's not coming on my desk. This is what's on my desk for a year. Yeah. And I can get everything on that. And I can hire private investigators. I've got my staff around me back home in Iceland. I've got staff here. You know, yeah. you, you're the first person that I call. Yeah, you, you call me and you're yeah. trying to figure out how we might be able to help. Yeah. Uh, I have known Norma, mm -hmm. uh, Sherry's mom, for years. Mm -hmm. um, she was, you know, on one of the first cases when we started Project Cold Case. Yeah. One of the first ones that was submitted to us that we did a spotlight on. Um, of course, uh, so that that's good for you because I have direct connection to yeah. her. And, and we already have a trust, yeah. you know. So I was able to reach out to the family. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I had the connections at the state attorney's office with the, mm-hmm. you know, and with uh, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, although they weren't really, they didn't really cooperate. They, they declined to be interviewed. They, they just, declined to... That's what, you know, what's happening just in, in America right now. They just decline. It's yeah. easier for them to decline any, everything than to have something right, going against right. them. But and, they, but uh, Jay Farhat, who was the mm-hmm. supervisor of the homicide team yeah. assigned to that case, had retired from the sheriff's yep. office. So he didn't, he was allowed, you know, he, yeah, he could he interview sat down if he and wanted to. Sat and down he did. And sat down and talked with us. Uh, Dan Skinner also did. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then we... And you guys, I mean, you went, you just would wander into places with a camera yeah. in that area of town, yeah. not just randomly, no, no, no. but you yeah. had identified places where you knew uh, Sherry had friends, where Johnny had friends, uh, and you would, you know, just start talking to people. Yeah, but, you know, the story isn't that big in scope in a way. Uh, location wise right you know it's a small community right, so back north in, side of Jacksonville yeah, yeah, Ocean, Way. Ocean Way you know right. we spent a lot, you know you were there with us mm-hmm. was, you know was, we were here for long you yeah. know I, and yeah. I've been it took us three trips here to, to do everything and we people knew of us pretty yeah. fast yeah. You know? word spread throughout that community yeah, yeah. and we were but, getting tips yeah and we had a had a fantastic private investigator with us, uh, Mr. Buck Buchanan, Buck at the, Buchanan, Buch- at the yeah. Bu- Buchanan investigation group, and his staff was with us. Yeah, and they you he know, did a lot of the groundwork before uh, you yeah, got here, yeah, right? Yeah, like and, he, and he's kind of feeling things out, talking to people. He did a lot of groundwork, but what, like what he said is, when word traveled, you needed to respond really fast about everything. So we were maybe had like a, a blueprint of what we were going to do of the day. Yeah, and had some interviews, and they were like, well. This guy wants to talk, and he has never talked. Right. You want to go meet him now? So there was a lot of lot of that. Yeah. Uh, and in filmmaking, you always have to have everything prepared. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. the shoot schedule. Yeah. Everything. Uh, everything. You know, yeah. Like twenty days in front. But this was very different because different. people were coming out of, and you didn't know some of them whether they were, you know, just trying to get on camera. And I mean, a lot of people did that. Yeah. Just wanted to get on camera and didn't do anything and don't end up in the film. And sure. that's just like, that, that, that's how it is. But then we had like meeting somebody that we had scheduled. And uh, what happened was we were meeting this uh, person that was close to Sherry. Mm-hmm. And we had this date with her. It's, it's just, this tells you how everything was. And we were going to meet her at Boots and Bottles to do an interview. And she doesn't show up, and we were like, "What? What? what? Okay, let's wait." Then we start shooting something else. And then we we're trying to get back to him. She just doesn't answer the phone. Yeah, ghost on you. She just yeah, and and uh, we're like, "Doesn't sound like this person." And Buchanan is a private investigator, and he right. smells things, and he's <laughs> like, "Doesn't sound like her." No, she's been great contact. Okay, and he finds out. A relative's number, which he gets calls, and the relative says this person hasn't been home for a few days, and we're like, okay, is that unusual? And she's like, maybe not unusual, but we feel something's off because right. we knew she was talking about this person was talking about the interview, etc., and was really, really looking forward to it, and he just starts asking about some names, something, and and you know, and then this. They name names, but then one name kicks off that is like a nickname, and he goes to his files and starts to find something. And then he calls back and says, "What kind of car does the person have?" They figure that out. He finds the car. We drive there at this really weird place, and it turns out the person we're going to interview is in jail. Ah. Oh. And uh, and this place that. The person used to be spending a lot of time in the person's asking them for money uh-huh. to bail bail the person out but the bail money is high pretty high because it, see the person's wanted in other states uh, okay and we're like and we're filming everything right we're taking right. this all this in and we're like this is what this 
is all about this yeah, yeah. this it's circus like this, of things this everything underground world that you kind of stumbled into it's it's and it's you know being from iceland you know we don't have many murders we don't yeah. have many things like this you know you get this in and you know and then we get a conf- call with this person we get the person on the phone and there's an interview in the documentary to the person they had great insight on everything and uh there was like a great interview that is in in episode one and, right. uh, and they were like wow you know all this get through and this is a one phone call interview yeah you you, you can meet the person so, right yeah i mean that was to me kind of sitting on the outside because i my office helped with with mm-hmm. norma you yeah. know a little bit of the the mm-hmm. law enforcement mm-hmm. stuff just so but uh you know i saw you those few days and yeah. then you guys were out yeah filming shooting you know we keep in touch a little mm-hmm. bit you know but you were working yeah and uh, and then when i talked to you again you'd have these you know stories mm-hmm. and and it was like uh you really didn't know what you were going to end up with what the end result of this uh, film was going to be when you started you no. had one idea and then it really just um yeah we had a script for three episodes which we pretty much threw in the toilet at day five we were like yeah. this is <laughs> not the series that there was just do. too much yeah. other stuff yeah uh that you started to uncover yeah and then were bigger stuff that we still haven't gone into yeah. a much much bigger stuff that we just at this point can't do without bigger people involved in yeah. in, in places that you know run things around uh, the system here sure sure yeah um, Iceland you talked about it we talked about it a little bit you populations are around 350,000 yeah. people something like that yeah. Reykjavik is kind of where everybody yeah the, mo- like, the most yeah. dense part of, yeah. of Iceland yeah. and uh, and you were, before we started you were saying that you know in the last 20 years you maybe had 30 murders I think it's total. like 38 murders something like that yeah and and you, you said you know rarely do they go unsolved no. there's like a one or two cases that are huge in Iceland because yeah this is the one huge case in Unsolved murder in Iceland from 69 or something. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, and I've asked you guys this one when, when we were, when you were down here filming and we were talking like um, that, that the murders are typically like a domestic situation yeah. where it's a known, you know, person that, you it's know. It's either a, a loved one. Right. Or a relative. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, so... Some of the things you've told me about, you know, while y'all were out filming, like I've lived in Jacksonville pretty much my entire life. And yeah. there is a side of Jacksonville that like I didn't know mm-hmm. really existed. I mean, I, there's poverty and, you know, and stuff like that. But uh, some of the stuff that you're going to show in this series, um, it, it was even mind blowing to me, you know, to, to see it like that the, there really is kind of this. Uh, underground network of of people that some of them do bad things a lot of people that know somebody's done something bad Mm -hmm. uh, but they don't really come forward uh, and talk to the police yeah it's a saying you know snitches get stitches you know people there just don't talk to police and uh, but we were lucky that they were talking to us you know this camera did some magic to people they yeah. just start talking and a lot of people like talk out of camera right and uh, and then we could go and interview the people they were talking about on camera and uh, it just sort of blew up and uh, we had to come back actually yeah we were not gonna come back because there was like <laughs> so much we had to do so uh, we came back in March to finish things up um, and you started in uh, October. Yeah, well, you started filming, but you've been working on this, like you said. I met you, first time I met you was in like June. Yeah, 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 yeah. Came it was... in June and uh, did the scouting, talked mm-hmm. to people, and met with everybody. Then we, we shooting. had some phone calls, you know, where we got yeah. people involved. Yeah. Uh, and, and then 
Uh, we, uh, we have some pictures. Um, you know, this is not something we do, do mm -hmm. on a daily basis. We don't typically uh, do uh, uh, film, you know, make yeah, films. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, uh, but so this was at uh, Norma Ellis's house, Sherry's yeah. mom. Um, really? Uh, that's KJ is what we call him. Uh, yeah, know. this is Kjartan Atli Kjartansson. Yeah. Better to call KJ. Better to call KJ. <laughs> and he's like the host, and he's a really big big host in Iceland he hosts uh, he does a lot with basketball and yeah, yeah. sports and he's yeah, he, kind of the recognizable face in yeah. Iceland for, yeah. for stories mm -hmm. that was just some pictures of uh, on the left is a picture of the courthouse after uh, the the plea deal yeah. and they were kind of celebrating justice there Norma and Mandy yeah. um, here one of the things we were able to help facilitate was getting Norma's to go down to the property room and get the personal effects back of Sherry that were allowed to be released. That she and had that's been trying right to outside get. The, yeah, and she had been trying to get forever. And uh, that was, uh, that's walking up, up to the there and that's inside while we were all waiting for the property to, to come back out. And then we came back to our office and she opened it on camera, you yep. know, in this room we're in right now. And this was at the scene. Uh, this is where Sherry was recovered. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a little memorial out there with uh, signs and flowers and balloons and and bugs. Man, you guys, I was I was trying to swap bugs from behind your your crew because they're Crazy. holding up boom mics yeah. and cameras and and there's bugs biting them and they're you know and I'm standing behind them trying to there get were, the. There were a lot of bugs. Yeah, it's yeah. a very. I mean, there was a neighborhood right around the corner. That's a uh, Dan Skinner. That's at mm -hmm. the state attorney's office. That was the assistant state attorney that uh, was prosecuting the case. But uh, there's a nice neighborhood over n not far from where Sherry was found. Yeah, but, just, yeah. but it's a pretty wooded area, yeah. and, and uh, I think that's a relatively newer neighborhood in mm -hmm. there. Um, but that's kind of uh, – that was back in, here in our office. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked to Patty, who – And we talked uh, to you. And we talked – yeah, he talked to me. Uh, Patty was the lead advocate. There you are. I'm, I'm talking with, uh, with KJ. Um, Patty – did a lot of the escorting of Norma while you guys were here. She, yeah. she drove, you know, Norma to go get her remains. Uh, she stayed off camera. There's the whole crew. Yeah, it was great. Uh, all of us back here at, at our office. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, she, Patty stayed off camera, but she was there for Norma if Norma needed Yeah, she was like, needed to chat. Patty's like the super Wonder Woman. It yeah. Was like, great to have her do, she kept, uh, she, she was like a, punching bag emotion probably for Norma <laughs> poor Patty has seen Norma at her her best and at her worst and, but uh, you know they have really bonded um, Norma you know there I don't know if you remember this I don't know if this makes it into your film but uh, Norma said in her in her dining room with that while she was interviewing she said uh, I think it was there she said I'll never love anyone else again yes yeah, she says that says that on camera she's, yeah that, that's and, that's and, done for her yeah and and, and we, we talked about what she's she's gone through yeah you know and you you understand it and and there's it it's not love but it's trust Norma has a hard time trusting people too mm -hmm. you know and um and her and Patty have have bonded in a way where mm -hmm. where Norma I believe trust Patty, you know, and, mm -hmm. and Patty l looks out for Norma's best mm -hmm. interest, you know, constantly. And uh, we have conversations, you know, over and over uh, with with Patty just talking about, well, I, I spoke to Norma this morning. Mm -hmm. I spoke to Norma. Yeah, um, this is what's going on. And, you know, to see, um, you know, Norma's kind of transition from, you know, from when Sherry first went missing and I first met her to kind of culminating with this docu-series um, and, and the ups and downs that she's gone through, you know, Norma's gone through. Um, I've seen her in a really good place, you know, um, and she still has to deal with stuff and struggling. But uh, but I think, you know, that bond, I mean, there were there were times, and uh, we can joke with Norma now, but, but I remember when the, the first conversation we had telling you, like, like, this is a very strong woman. Yeah. Uh, and if if when she gets something in her head, you know she's she's gonna yeah. yell, kick, scream, yeah. Yeah. and make sure. And and you can ask the the detective and the prosecutor, and they all told you that yeah. separately. Yeah. You know that she was uh, many phone calls with Norma, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes productive, sometimes getting yelled at. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean, 
we've all been there with her and she's like you know i have a, a lot of respect for her she's really yeah. smart yeah, that's she, what she, i she is. you know she, what uh, i found like when people were talking about her they were talking about how she was like strong and driving and everything like that and sometimes they forgot to mention that she's smart really smart she's yeah. like sometimes two steps ahead of people she she was particularly with this because you know uh this was her element yeah. that is her neighborhood yeah you know i mean that's her community yeah. uh she would say things like you know they would say uh, the detectives would say tell me somebody's name and she wouldn't leave and go home she, she would know who the, they were talking about. she wouldn't tell the detective she knew who they were talking no. about but she would leave there and go and find yeah, that person she would t- take up uh brett to yeah put together yeah. And, and then she'd show up there and she'd start asking questions yeah uh she knew the locations mm-hmm. they were talking about she knew the people they were talking about um she really kind of did some of her own yeah, and, you know, and, and investigating, and she and Mandy went all over every trap house. Every, it, yeah, every... I, the stories of her going into trap houses and saying, "I don't care what you're doing here. That's none of my business." It's my daughter here. I want to know where my daughter is. I want to know if anybody has information on yeah. her. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and I mean, she she said the detectives told her, you know, you're you're going to end up dead. killed. Yeah. You're going to end up dead, and uh, and. And she was very clear. She didn't care. Mm-hmm. She she would die trying to find out what happened to her daughter. Yeah. And uh, and so, uh, very smart, strong woman. Nobody knew what they were getting into no. when they started, uh, you know, <laughs> investigating this case and, mm-hmm. and, and and dealing with Norma. Um, you know, we we've got, gotten to know her very very well and 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 uh, care very deeply about her yeah. and, and making sure that that she gets those answers and that she gets the help the you know one of the things that stuck out in my mind when we were helping you was when we brought back that evidence here to the office and she opened up these bags and it was like a ring and like a hair scrunchie and shoes and it wasn't much i mean there no. wasn't much left left there but at the scene to jump in that was like she had been trying to get something for years yeah and it was such a big victory for her to finally being able and you know, who knows if we w- wouldn't have come here and done this series, if she would still have the yeah. things. Yeah. Oh, things absolutely. Would probably and, still be in the evidence room. Absolutely. And uh, and you know, and I remember uh, after that was when we went to the to the Braddock Road to yeah. the scene where she was found, and I remember her telling you guys like, I think this is going to be the last time I go. Yeah. To and the scene. I think and that's she true. Did she would go and like lay down in the dirt yeah. where she, you know, where Sherry was found. Um, it was, it was really, uh, I mean, saying it was traumatic is an understatement, mm-hmm. you know, to, to Norma. Um, and she, you know, she kind of turned that corner at that moment and yeah. she said, uh, I know Sherry would want me to, to be happy again. Yeah. And I used to be so happy and I used to have, you know, and, and she promised her, that she was going to find happiness exactly and to make her and proud of her so that was really beautiful it was it was uh it was it was something that was uh very emotional to even witness yeah. you know on the outside um we we have uh, i mean is there anything else about i want to show the promo that mm-hmm. you guys have been airing in in iceland but i mean is there any other things that you could think of that you know you wanted to make sure to mention or or talk no, about I, think, like, I, I mean i think we covered mm-hmm. most of it um you, this is airing in iceland uh, but you're still working on ways to try to get it aired uh in the united states right i mean you guys have have yeah what happens usually is you air it at your uh you know it's an icelandic mm-hmm. uh, series so it you know it has to be aired in iceland first and it just airs there and you know people watch it and you like then after a while you sit down and you start to give it to like sales people who uh, like gotcha who take then? it over the world and sometimes it's picked up sometimes not sure so, sure so none of that has actually happened yet because it's got to air in yeah it's got to air yeah it, it's premiered in iceland and then it's but then there it are a lot could of be distributed yeah there are some things going on yeah good 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 well Probably, 
probably just have to buy the network and then watch it. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Something like that. So um, have we had any questions? Like people are asking how yeah, to watch it. To watch yeah. So you've got to get it aired there first, and and there may be a way for. Um, we'll I, we'll you, figure something yeah, out. Yeah, I don't know how somebody would do that. They go on, you know. I don't know if the network will, you know, hear um, whether it's Discovery Channel or whatever. A lot of times they'll put the series online mm -hmm. for the people that su subscribe to that, mm -hmm. you know, cable package or whatever on demand or whatever. Um, we'll try to figure that out, yeah, and, yeah. and if, you know. We, of course, will share it, you know, once uh, if we have that opportunity. And you've always been good to us to keep us in the loop on that mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, I trust, you know. You, you've actually you know, seen. I've, we, I've, we can say that. You've seen. Yeah, I, I've seen some, some, some rough cuts. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm, I'm anxious to, to see um, your the final, final product. Yeah, product. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I know that the, the family is anxious to, you know, they want to see it too. And we've been tried, trying to work that, that kind of stuff out. Um, as far as the general public goes, um, once that thing airs in Iceland, uh, hopefully somebody else is going to see the value in it and see the, the mm -hmm. good work that went into it and, and pick it up. And of course, if, if that happens, we'll be the first ones promoting it and, yep. and sharing where it can be seen. And, and uh, if there's any other way for, for uh, you know, the general public in the United States to view it, uh, if you figure that out, you just let me know and we'll, we'll pass that on to everybody. Um, with that being said, there's, there's this short little trailer promo mm -hmm. that's been aired that we're going to air. And then you said there may be another one that's a little bit longer that'll come out, uh, probably on Friday, probably on Friday. So we'll, we'll share that one as well. Once mm -hmm. there's longer, Any, anything that you have coming, you know, if you pass that on to us, we'll share it with everybody else. Uh, uh, let's watch that. Then we'll kind of close it out yep. and, uh, and we'll go from there. All right, Clint, let's see it. <laughs> Yeah, I can't have a seat if you don't mind. Do you mind uh, taking a look at us? Not at all. Do I have any, any type of weapons on you or anything like that, right? Thanks. I don't even know why I'm here. Uh, what was your name again, sir? Johnny Johnson. Johnny Johnson, great. Thank you, sir. What, what nationality? I'm Iceland. Investigators say they've arrested the man accused of killing a local mom and dumping her body in the woods. There's holes in the story. There's a possibility that there was actually another person who was the shooter. That I did not hurt that woman. He is all about falsehood and lies. I actually believe he's the one who did it. If it had gone to court, a jury would have never heard that. There's one person that knows what Johnny Wayne Johnson did the night that Sherry disappeared. And that's Johnny Wayne Johnson. Wayne Johnson. Wayne Johnson. <laughs> All right, mm -hmm. that hopefully got everybody uh, excited. Um, although we don't know when they'll be able to watch it, but <laughs> uh, tell me this as a as a filmmaker, uh, how many times have you watched this foot? Well, first of all, you guys had, I mean, days of footage. I mean, when you were down here shooting, you I don't even know if you know how much you know numerically how many hours of of filming you did, but I mean it must have taken forever to kind of sort through that it takes months yeah it's, it's you know you, you yeah and also we had so much from the uh, sheriff's office yeah all their their interrogation videos yeah, interviews, and all the videos, files and you the gotta files read through that through. files you know what are you missing you know and that's tens of thousands of documents yeah and uh somebody has to read it and that's me do you ever get to a point where you just are like, I have seen, watched this so many times that. I'm no, no, but over. what I do is, as soon as I'm done, I never, I never watch it. I never go back to it. It's just done. So, you know, of course there comes days when you, you know, think it's Need terrible. Yeah, 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 I think yeah, it's yeah. terrible. But that's just part of the job. Then you just like shake it off and get back to it. But yeah. you never watch again what you do. That's yeah. like, you, you would be banging your head. Yeah, on a, yeah. on a table like Johnny did, you know, <laughs> right. because uh, you would see all the things that you should have done better. Should have done better. So you you do watch, you get it to a part, a point where you hand it over to the network, 
and yeah. then that's it. And that's then it, you, yeah. you you wipe your hands. Yeah, on now it, you we're walk away. finalizing like the colors in it. You know, yeah. you, you get a like if you got to change something in the color or make it. Make yeah, it like the the rough draft I saw, you had like like words up. They were kind of like holder placeholders yeah, yeah. for stuff. Yeah. You had some stock images mm -hmm. that you still had to go back in and yeah. you know and do and uh, uh, yeah. So uh, it it seems. Do you track your hours? Do you know how many no, hours you've no. spent on this project? My wife does, but I don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's probably, you probably got paid about four cents an hour yeah, when it's all said I mean, and done. Not even that. Yeah. yeah I, mean, that's, I that's, mean, your hourly rate was probably. Know, yeah. Uh, yeah. If well, I would get four cents an hour, I'd probably be, be really happy. <laughs> really happy. Yeah. Well, I, I know, uh, you know, from our conversations mm -hmm. and the, the, the friendship we've developed, you yeah. know, over the last almost year now, you know, mm -hmm. that we've been talking. Um, that, that a lot went into this. Uh, I'm really excited to see it. And I know, you know, you, you're, you're telling a story here, but you're telling more than one story, you know? And so that's and, something that we need to maybe address that it's the story of the case. It's yeah. the story of Sherry's family, like Norma and Mandy. And, uh, we didn't meet, meet Brittany, but we like heard a lot of things about right. her and she being her other her daughter. Other daughter. Yeah. yeah, Sherry's. But we also went and met, Johnny Wayne Johnson's family mm -hmm. because you know Johnny's mother lost a child also yeah. to, to a, and, and he was her only child he's in prison and uh, she's kind of now raising his kids right or yeah. helping out with yeah. his kids yeah and it's it's uh it's such a tragic event everywhere and yeah. uh, it's uh, and then you have the Johnny story you have his family then you have you know what was the law doing and, and et cetera, yeah. et cetera. And then you have the people around everything around it because there are a lot of, a lot of unbelievable characters around it. Yeah. And, uh, we, we, there's this, uh, scene in the, in the series where we were talking about somebody that may, a lot of people think are talking about did this, we yeah. have this, you, you know, and, uh, we met somebody that was talking about, the relationship that's a female the relationship with that man yeah and we talked to her after the bright young girl uh, came across pretty well but we sort of figured out something was off and we were like talking about like are you using stuff like that and she was like yeah a little bit but not that much fast forward three four days we're driving in ocean way doing an interview uh with uh actually with uh white supremacist people and uh we see somebody walking tweaking and out of this world that was this female and we talked to her and she told us everything she's a big heroin user yeah which shows her marks on her head yeah. and we just burst out crying and you know that's also what this is about this is about you know the community and everything like that and that was like wow you know to you know coming here to to a murder mystery and you and you end get up pulled in all these different directions these different with this you whole, know since uh, you know having a, a white supremacist fellow you know giving you a big hug and kissing you and saying how great you are and you know yeah and, yeah and and being and you talking to him and you're like if you would wear a sweater you wouldn't even know right right he right would be just just another guy yeah. in the street yeah yeah and that was like and like while we were talking to him there were like six police cars arresting people there yeah and the police would come up to like is everything okay and he would be like yeah it's just my friends here they're from iceland you know power to the people and it was like you was, guys are, and I, you're like i i remember uh i think buck buchanan he mm. told you guys a couple times he was like uh Y'all don't have any fear, but y'all need to have some fear. Like, yeah, that's you know. also like, you know, when you go into shooting mode, Yeah, you know, you, you feel don't... like you're protected by this camera in yeah, front of yeah. you, like and you're, you're separated. Watching but you're watching this monitor, and that's your world. Yeah. Everything outside it, you ain't thinking about. And uh, yeah, there were, I think there were three times where we should have been scared. Yeah. And uh, one time particularly, he, uh, Mr. Buchanan had to like, pull KJ off a little bit back and we were I was watching from behind you know yeah. as the director and seeing his hand 
going to his yeah. gun place. Yeah. And He's that was like, the peop we knew then, okay, something's off here. And we had all had that feeling before we drive up to. But then as a filmmaker, you're like, yeah, let's go out and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get the shot and let's do it. And then you're in that world. And yeah, luckily, and Buck Buchanan's there to keep you and yeah, know, but, to kind of keep I an mean, eye on. You know, like with you, without you people here, we wouldn't have uh, this series. Yeah. We would. Yeah, there's no way we would have had a lot of things that we have. And the same thing with him. Without yeah, yeah. Mr. Buchanan, we would, you know. Yeah, you, and, you uh, wouldn't have found some of those yeah. people. And, and filmmakers are brilliant at finding people to do things for them. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's just like, <laughs> that's, you know, that's what... Well, it was interesting. You, you said the word character. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you're making a, a film, you've got to have characters. Yeah. And a documentary, you know, is not based on characters. You don't get to create these people. You no. just have to hope that there's somebody involved that is of interest. Yep. And, and that, you ended up with a bunch of those. Yeah, I mean, that's what's, you know, I've never done a documentary before. I come yeah. from a feature film world. I've done a bunch of those. And, uh, and this was also a really big challenge for me because of that, because I've been, you yeah. can write your characters in a feature yeah, you film. You can make them whatever you want yeah. them to be. But this like changed everything, how I work, everything. I've like, you know, I'm, I'm you know why I'm here in town, yeah, yeah. I'm doing another project here. And that changed everything, how I work for that. So it's completely changed your, yeah. your theory and philosophy on yeah. filmmaking because. Yeah, you know, there's, Two things that have changed how I approach everything. That's having children, yeah. and then this yeah. this project opened up everything, and uh, I figured out maybe I wasn't as smart as I thought before. You know, <laughs> and just like yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing this yeah. with us. I realize now as we're talking, like we got to figure out a way to sh show this yeah, <laughs> series yeah, yeah. to all these people that we, you know, that we're talking to. About I don't want to say anything that I can't. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're going to work on it though. We'll try to figure out a way. They will see it. Yeah. They yeah. will just when and how we'll, we'll go figure through that you. out. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, it was kind of kind of cruel to get them all pumped up about all of this. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. It, so it, will, it will be. We'll, we'll figure out a way mm -hmm. um, somehow, some way, and uh, and share those. Uh, thanks for coming in. Thanks for uh, sharing uh, mm -hmm. Sherry's story with with the world. Mm -hmm. um, uh, thanks for the uh, kind of understanding and compassion you and your crew showed to mm -hmm. to Sherry's family. I mean you saw the uh the emotion mm -hmm. uh the, that family and the the burden that they carried you know and I, I felt like uh you guys really treated them well and and were understanding of that which was you know as an as our group that's our concern you know yeah. is to make sure that the family is is treated properly mm -hmm. um but uh yeah, I, I appreciate everything that you guys have done. It's been a, a, a great uh, experience for me getting to know you guys mm -hmm. and learning about some Icelandic culture. Um, one day maybe I'll make that trip and come yeah, <laughs> hang yeah, out with yeah. you guys uh, 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 You guys there. Um, with that being said, uh, you know, thanks again. Uh, we're ho hoping that it's a very successful series in, in Iceland and that uh, it gets picked up in some other places to share this story. Um, we're going to show a picture of, uh, of Sherry one more time, kind of just, to, you know, that that's the, the victim in this case. And like we talked about, you know, there's multiple stories in your in your series. But uh, but this was the part that we were connected with. Um, yeah, she's like the she's the red. She's like the red uh, threat, you know, yeah. everything, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. She ties uh, but, it all together. Yeah, but and then you have like 10 different. Yeah, it, it's it's uh, her murder that that kind of allows opens up the floodgates and yeah. allows you to see all these different worlds yeah. combining. Yeah. And uh, and do you know did did Sherry and Johnny know each other before this? You did have you, to watch the film. You have to watch the film. <laughs> there are things that you know. Perfect timing. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, thanks a lot, Anton. We'll uh, we'll keep in touch and we'll make sure everybody when. It, the opportunity is there. We'll make sure everybody gets a chance to see it. And uh, we'll see you guys next week with another uh, Facebook Live.